Hi, everyone. This is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception Action Podcast, back with another article review. In today's episode, I want to look at an interesting paper that touches on something I'm, I have a slightly controversial opinion on, is, is giving people effort-based targets in, in, uh, in training, right? So, for example, you know, in baseball, we commonly use, I want a pitcher, your baseball pitcher, I want you to throw at 50% your max effort. I want to throw 75% your math at max effort. I want to look at that practice in particular and compare it to when I give you a specific target based on, you know, your, so I know that your maximum, uh, maximum you can throw is 95 miles an hour. I could calculate 50%, right? And say, I want you to throw 50 miles an hour, for example. Um, so give you a discrete uh, quantitative value as a target versus perceived effort. So that's where we're going today. The paper I'm, I'm going to touch on that touches on this is in weightlifting. So they're talking about velocity-based training. So this idea, you know, we have sensors now, IMUs, and all these different things we can put on the barbell to measure how quickly you can move the bar, right? This one is not, this one is not talking about a percentage effort. It's comparing giving you a specific target of I want you to move it this fast and you know, so many meters per second versus this kind of vague target, I want you to move it as fast as possible. Which one of those results in the better performance, right? So the idea is that, you know, maybe more specific goals are better for people. They give people higher motivation, they're more challenging. Um, we can use, as I mentioned, we can use these linear position transducers, IMUs to make uh, feedback very, very specific, right? I can, I can give you a specific target. I want you to lift the barbell at 10 meters per second or whatever you know, a very, very specific target and give you feedback related to that target now, because there's so many different ways that almost every sport and every sports task we can talk about, we can start to do that now with the type of equipment we have, right? Um, so what we're at, what they're really asking here is they're going to, they're looking at the bench press. They're going to prepare a specific velocity goal versus uh, move as fast as possible, right? So two instructions, move as fast as possible versus achieve a target velocity of, for example, 10 meters per second. Um, the, what they're going to measure is the effect on the immediate performance, right? Your effect during, you know, how fast you move the barbell, how close to the target you get versus, uh, ver and, and also kind of the carryover effect. After you do this exercise, then I will ask you to do a one rep max in the future or lift so many at a certain speed. How many can you do it, right? How much effort? So they're getting at how much effort it requires. So in, for the study, they use 15 male power lifters. Um, this is a within subjects design. So everybody does all both conditions. In the first condition, they're asked to uh, cue um, uh, to target to attain a mean velocity of one, of one meter per second squared while performing a free weight bench press. Okay, with uh, the weight on it was 40% of their one rep max. For, for full and complete, a complete story, it's not super relevant to what I'm talking about, but so they they have basically half the one the weight on it they can do with for one rep. They're asked to reach this target speed. In the second session, they were asked just to lift as fast as possible. Okay. After each session, someone has the IMU and read it, can see that they're told the target speed. Okay. Then they have this carryover session that's performed somewhere between three and seven, seven days later. I'm not sure why there was that variance in there. Uh, but they where they they're asked to complete um it says to what did this, what are the carryover effects of doing this, this these two things, okay? Um, so when in this, the fast, so what they're gonna look at, the fastest mean velocity, um, where they're doing a five repetition set, you know, five repetitions where you're trying to meet the target velocity or five repetitions where you're trying to move as quickly as possible. And they're looking at um, how, what's the fastest mean velocity you get during that set. Um, then the second variable was uh, in the carryover test. I didn't get into the specifics. What it was, you had on the bar was 75% of your one rep max. So more weight, how many repetitions could you do? Right? How, many, how much carryover was, okay? So these are the two conditions. Here's what they found, right? So these are showing the velocity, the mean velocity of the bar, right? How quickly you're moving the bar. A is the condition where you're given this target to hit. B is where you're told to move as fast as possible, right? So both on average, and if you look at individuals for 11 out of 13 
participants, the mean velocity produced of the bar was higher when you were given the specific target as opposed to moving as quickly as possible, right? And both of them, you were given feedback, right? But one, you were asking to hit a specific target, okay? In terms of how many times you could do reps, you could do of the 75% and the carrot seven days later, there was no um, difference, right? There was no difference in the carryover effect suggesting the amount of effort and things were, were, the, were the same, right? So overall, this suggests that there's more value for the specific target, right? A specific uh, velocity target as opposed to doing as quickly as possible. So their kind of conclusion instruction to attain a challenging velocity target may be more effective strategy to use than trying to do move the bar as quick as possible. A specific target is more effective than an abstract max effort one, right? So I think that's an interesting finding. I think it, uh, for me, it fits with what what I see, right? As I mentioned, this is a, this relates to me to a thing that I see often in baseball, and I'm sure it occurs in lots of other sports too, is giving people effort targets, right? So we, we ask pitchers to throw, can you throw at 75%? You throw at max effort. Can you throw at 50% effort? And I guess, you know, I see the logic in this, right? You want the people to tune in to be able, well, in old baseball, we'd want people, you know, especially starting pitchers to reduce their effort throughout the end. Then, you know, so I want you to throw a 75% effort in early in the game so you last longer, right? That doesn't really happen in much anymore, right? Just almost all pitchers are expected to throw close to max effort for all the time they're in there and short time and then, they come out and someone else that comes to do the same thing. So, but the idea is here, I think we want the idea, we want people to be able to tune into their effort, which can be useful. Um, we also, it recognizes, right, that the, what we, the, the objective variable for whether it's barbell velocity or speed is not going to always be the same for the same amount of effort, right? If I'm really tired, my 75% effort might be slower speed than on days where I'm fresh and I haven't, I haven't pitched recently and so on. So getting at max effort might be less chance of injury, getting you throw a certain percentage of it than a target speed, right? If I really pushed you hard in the game before that asked you to throw 90, 85 miles an hour, that causes more, may cause more stress than getting you to throw at 75% of your maximum, right? Even though if I actually calculated those on, the, on they might be the same, throwing at 75%, you might lower it a bit when you're t based on your level, perceived level of fatigue and so on, right? But there's, there is some research on this. Here's an example of the conference paper. There are some, this is Glenn Fisick and colleagues from AS, Glenn Fisick and colleagues from ASMI, a lot of different things going on, okay? What they had people do was to try to throw at 75, 50 max effort and, they measured a bunch of different things. They measured both the outcome, uh, the speed, but they also measured uh, the forces on the elbow, the torque uh, on the elbow, things like this. And what they found was that people don't, they, these aren't, these tar you don't accurately hit your effort target, right? If your effort target is based on the amount of force you're putting on your joints, which you know, um, people, the do not people do pitchers did not reduce their effort at a level that matched the torque right the effort when the when they thought when they said they were throwing at 50 percent effort they were not throwing with 50 percent force on their elbow right so i don't think people are particularly good at this anyway right so i and that that study showed you know if, i think now that we have the technology we have the uh, means to provide uh, direct, you know, a lot of things like, um, you know, baseball, the, you know, we can provide pretty quickly direct information about things like torque and different forces and, and kinematics and things. I would like to see movement towards giving people specific targets, specific targets as opposed to, I know effort is easier. And as I said, maybe there's something to be said for being able to tune into your effort. I think we can do that as well, rate it on the side, get people and give people feedback about, okay, you think that's 50% effort, but you're, you're not. <laughs> so I think that would be more useful. So I think this, this, as I said, this study speaks to me about this practice. And I think moving in a direction where we give people more tangible, specific targets based on things we're measuring anyways, I think makes a lot more sense to me than sticking with perceived effort. Um, so specific target, 
for an individual that's you um, instead of percentage efforts. That's where I I I believe a better direction to go. As I said, not everybody would agree with me. A lot of people love using the effort, the percentage efforts. Okay. Um, so that's it for today's episode. I think that, you know, as I said, I think that's a really interesting article. And this is something I'd like to see it explored a bit more. It's something I've always kind of been, you know, not totally happy with. And had, as I said, my opinion's a bit controversial. Not everybody agrees. Um, but I think it's an interesting article nonetheless. So thanks for joining me. Cheers for now and keep them coupled.